For this video, we're going to be graphing exponential graphs without a calculator. I have a new parent function, y equals 2 to the x. If I don't know how to graph something, I can always make a table of values and then plot points. This is an exponential function because the x is in the exponent. If I'm trying to evaluate 2 to the negative third power, I have to remember that the negative in the exponent tells me to move my 2 to the third to the bottom of a fraction. And 2 to the third power is 8, so when x is 3, y is 1 eighth. 2 to the negative 2 power is 1 over 2 squared. 2 squared was 4, so when x is negative 2, y is 1 fourth. 2 to the negative 1 power is 1 over 2, or 1 half. 2 to the 0. Any number to the 0 power is always 1. So my y-intercept for this graph is 1. 2 to the first power is 2. So from my origin, I go over 1 up 2. 2 to the second power is 4. So from my origin, I go over 2 up 4 to plot my next point. 2 to the third power is 8. So from the origin, over 2 up 8. When I draw my function, I connect this with a nice, smooth curve. I'm going to put arrows on both ends. And I'm also going to show that this function will never drop down below the x-axis. In this function, what we have here, we draw a dashed line where the x-axis is, and this thing is called an asymptote. An asymptote is like a fence for the function. As the function gets closer and closer to the x-axis coming down here, it will get closer and closer to y equals 0. It will never reach y equals 0 because no matter what exponent, 2 could never become 0 or a negative number. The equation of this asymptote is y equals 0 because it's a horizontal line. Down in the information beneath the function, I wrote a space for asymptotes, and I'm going to put in y equals 0 there for the horizontal asymptote. I can also fill in the rest of the information that I learned in previous units. The x-intercept is where I touch the x-axis. There isn't going to be one because the x-axis was an asymptote. The y-intercept is where I touch the y-axis, which was at the coordinate 0, 1. The domain is saying, what can I be from left to right? If I start at the origin and look from left to right, my function appears on the left and the right sides. So when I write my domain, its x is an element of the real numbers. To look for the range, I want to look up and down from the origin. My function goes up, but it never goes down. So when I write my range, I have a restriction, y such that y is greater than 0. I need to be greater than 0 because I never physically touch the x-axis. I'm never y equals to 0, just greater. For increasing, decreasing, and end behavior, I want to think of what's happening at the ends of my graph. For this arrow on the left here, my x values are going forever to the left, so I'm going to call my x value of that arrow negative infinity. The y value of this arrow is getting closer and closer to zero, but never reaching it. For the arrow on the right side of my function, it's on the right side of my function, so I'm going to call my x positive infinity. This arrow is going up, which is the positive direction, so I'm going to call the y value for this vector arrow positive infinity. So where is my function increasing? A function is increasing when I draw from left to right if I'm going up. This function is going up the entire time. So for this function, I'm increasing from the x value over here on my left, which is negative infinity, is less than x, which is less than the x value over here on the right, which was positive infinity. This is also called strictly increasing. We're always increasing. Where is it decreasing? It's never decreasing because I can only go from left to right. 
for the end behavior of this graph, I have as x approaches infinity, x was approaching positive infinity over here on the right side of my graph. As the x was going to positive infinity, the y was going up, which was also positive infinity. As x approaches negative infinity was the left side of my graph. As x approaches negative infinity, the y values were going towards zero, which was the y value of the asymptote. I'm going to go to number three next because it's right next door on my paper. And here I'm graphing y equals two to the x minus three. In this case, the x minus three, the minus three is with the x. It's considered the inside of the function. Anything that's with the x affects us left and right. So a minus three is going to move our graph three to the right. What I'm essentially moving is the origin when I move. So if I move my origin three points to the right, my origin is now right here at three zero. This isn't a point on the graph for an exponential function, but I can still think of my transformations from there. I'm still going to have an asymptote at y equals zero because I've just shifted my asymptote three to the right, which doesn't change it. The normal shape of my graph was three to the zero power is one or sorry, two to the zero power is one. Anything to the zero power is one. Two to the first power is two. So I go over one, up two. Two to the second power is four. So from my anchor point, I go over two, up four. Two to the third is eight. So from my anchor point, I go over three, up eight. So the values that I'm using from my parent function were zero, one, 1, 2, 2, 4, and 3, 8. The negative x values over here, they got closer to my asymptote. I'm not going to worry about plotting those too carefully because they're little fractions and they're hard to plot. As far as figuring out what the x-intercept is, there isn't one because it's an asymptote. For the y-intercept, I'm going to need to think of those little negative exponents. This first y value to the left of my anchor point was 1 half because that was two to the negative one. Then I went down to a fourth, and then I went down to an eighth, so my y-intercept is zero, one-eighth. The other way I could calculate this value would be to take my original function and to plug in zero for x. You should be able to see that that gives us two to the negative third for y, which is one-eighth. For the domain of this, we've just shifted it to the right. Everything shifted to the right is still everything. For the range, I've only shifted to the right, so my range shouldn't change. My y values are still greater than zero. My asymptote was still y is zero. Anything with a y here was not really changing. I'm increasing still the entire time. So from negative infinity to infinity, I'm increasing. I'm never decreasing. As x approaches infinity, that was over here on the right side of the graph. My y was still approaching infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, that was over here on my left side of the graph, and the y was still approaching zero. Just shifting left or right didn't change either of those. Pause the video while you do number two and number four. On number two, the x plus three, the plus three was on the inside, so it's with the exponent. The inside does the opposite of what you'd expect. So this function moved three to the left and our new origin was over here at the point negative three zero. From there, I plotted my basic shape of the function, which was anything to the zero power is one, two to the first power is two, two to the second power is four, and two to the third power is eight. So that's how I plotted my points. I just counted from my new origin. So you have the information written about the function. The y-intercept is now eight. The domain is still all reals and the range is still greater than zero. 
the asymptote is still y equals 0 because I've only shifted it left. I'm still increasing the entire time from left to right, so I'm increasing from negative infinity to infinity. I'm never decreasing. As x approaches infinity, the graph approaches infinity because y is going up. And as x approaches negative infinity, that's the left side of the graph, the graph approaches 0 because y is going to 0. For number 4, I have a plus 1, and this plus 1 is on the end of the function, so that's considered the outside. It moves my whole graph up one unit. From there, I count my basic shape of my function. 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 to the first is 2. 2 to the second is 4. And 2 to the third is 8. That one went up a little off the graph, but that's okay. So we have no x-intercept. Our y-intercept is now at 0, 2. Our domain is still all reals. Our range is now greater than 1 because we've shifted our graph up one unit. And our asymptote is now y equals 1 because we've shifted the whole graph up one unit. My increasing, decreasing is still the same. As x approaches infinity, y still approaches infinity because on the right it's going up. But now, as x approaches negative infinity, the graph approaches 1 because the graph is leveling out at a horizontal asymptote of 1 instead of 0. Turn the page and try the rest of the examples on your own. If you check the video and they look good, you can stop. If they don't look good, listen through the explanation of each section. For number four, or sorry, five, our minus four is on the outside, so that's going to take our whole graph and move it down four, making our new anchor point right here. Because of that, our range is now y is greater than negative four, and our asymptote is now y equals negative four, and as x approaches negative infinity, y now approaches negative four. So shifting that graph down for affected the range, the value of the horizontal asymptote, and the y value as x approaches negative infinity, which is part of the end behavior. It also gave our function the opportunity to have an x-intercept. We now have an x-intercept because we've scooched down, we can cross the x-axis. We cross the x-axis at x equals 2. And we still had our same y-intercept up one unit from our anchor point, but that now made our y-intercept negative 3. On example number 7, we have a negative on the inside. Anything on the inside affected us left and right. Negatives made us reflect. So this time when we reflect, we're going to reflect over the y-axis or we're going to take our graph and we're going to flip it from left to right. Because of this, when I start out and plot my points, I still do my same point at over 0, up 1. The next point I plot would normally be 1 to the right, up 2, but instead I'm going 1 to the left, up 2. Then, because 2 squared is 4, I normally go 2 to the right, but instead I go 2 to the left up 4. 3 squared is, or sorry, 2 cubed is 8, so I go 3 to the left up 8. And then my little points down here got closer to the axis and they were kind of hard to plot. What does this have effect on the rest of my information? Well, my, I still don't have an x-intercept. My y-intercept is still at 1. That didn't change when I flipped left and right. My domain was still all reals. My range was still greater than 0. And my asymptote was still y equals 0. The biggest difference that we see is now if I go from left to right, my function is decreasing. That's called exponential decay. I'm decreasing. So from negative infinity to infinity, I'm now decreasing. And I'm never increasing. Also, with my end behavior, as x approaches infinity, which was the right side of my graph, my y was now going to 0. And as x approaches negative infinity, that was the left side of my graph, 
y was now going towards positive infinity because it was going up. For number 6, I'm graphing y equals 2 to the x minus 2 minus 1. The minus 2 in the exponent moves us 2 to the right, and the minus 1 on the outside moves us down 1. So our new anchor point is right here. By the way, if you are going to put this into your graphing calculator, you would need to be sure and put the x minus 2 in parentheses that I have up here in the exponent to show that that was moving us on the inside, it was moving us left and right, versus the minus 1 on the outside that was being done after I raised the 2 to the power. So from here, I just count out my basic shape of my function. So 2 to the 0 is 1, 2 to the 1st is 2, 2 to the 3rd is Sorry, 2 to the 2nd is 4, 2 to the 3rd is 8, so I plot my points on there, and I now have an x-intercept at positive 2, where I touch the x-axis. To find the y-intercept, when I look at my graph, I should realize this point that was to the left of my anchor point was up a half of a unit from the asymptote. The point that's 1 to the left of that was up a quarter of a unit from the asymptote, so my y-intercept is at 0, negative 3 quarters. The other way I could tell that is by plugging 0 in for x, which gives me 2 to the negative 2 minus 1. 2 to the negative 2 is 1 fourth. 1 fourth minus 1 is negative 3 fourths. For this function, my asymptote has moved down to negative 1, so now my range is greater than negative 1. My asymptote is y equals negative 1. I was increasing the entire time. I was never decreasing. As x approaches infinity, which was the right side of my graph, I was going up, so that was approaching negative or positive infinity. And as x approaches negative infinity, that was the left side of my graph. The y value out here on the left was approaching negative 1 because that was the y value of my horizontal asymptote. On number 8, I'm graphing y equals negative 2 to the x. On this negative, it's on the outside. So that's going to be an up-down change, and it's going to flip me over the x-axis. My x-axis is still my horizontal asymptote, at y equals 0, the function is now just flipped underneath that instead. Instead of going over 0, up 1, I go down 1. Over 1, down 2. Over 2, down 4. And over 3, down 8. So now I have another type of exponential function. It still looks the same shape, but instead it's making decay value of the function is decreasing as I go from left to right. When I take this function and I draw from left to right, my function is going down. So I'm decreasing from negative infinity to infinity. Also with my range for this function, everything is below the axis, so y is now less than 0. With my end behavior, as x approaches infinity, which was on the right, my function was now going down, so y was approaching negative infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, which was over here on the left, my y was leveling out at the horizontal asymptote and approaching 0. We can graph exponential functions using a parent function of 2 to the x, just realize when we're doing our transformations, anything that is up here in the exponent is considered the inside, and that's going to affect us left-right. Anything that's put out here on the end or out in front, those are considered the outside, and they're going to affect us up and down.